In the heart of America, in the wooded mountains of the Alleghenies, under the Tennessee sky, the blue edge of the mountains, the plateau of the Cumberland, the forgotten Cumberland, where the trees were slashed down, the forest destroyed, and the lumber mills were left to rot, the roofs of the mills torn off by the wind and weather of the mountains. Someone planned to live here, but the future was dead. The mines mostly abandoned, the coal ripped out, abandoned to the mountain floods. There was little left for a man to live on, but that little had to do. Tons of slate and rock, pounds of coal. But those few pounds meant food, so they went down again into mud and darkness, the rotting timbers and the smell of dynamite smoke. The plateau of the Cumberland, a bad land, ruined houses and ruined people. Yet they're the stock of the pioneers, the tough Scots and the English, descendants of the people who came here 200 years ago with hope and a few grains of seed. These are the same faces, the fifth generation. The soil gives nothing, no food for the people. Stones and weeds, forgotten land, lonely and forgotten people. The old, the middle-aged, the young, the newly born. The years of hard work and hunger and nothing left of their lives but these bits of crockery on their graves. Decorations of broken glass. The earth that failed to keep them alive. When the side of Mrs. Williams' house collapsed, her husband found another deserted home in another village. They moved to the place called Crow's Roost. The village called Who'd have thought it? The village called There Ain't No. Some of the families went down into the valley, hearing there was work down below. Work and food, work and life, maybe a new start and a decent pair of shoes and maybe electric light. Plenty of work, 11 hours a day, $6 a week. The trees torn out, the mines ruined to make a dividend, the people drawn down into the towns and robbed there. The same greed ruled the valley and the mountains. What kind of future for the children of Mrs. Vaughan, for the daughters of Mrs. Johnson? The school was a new beginning, a link between the towns and the mountains. Miles Horton was its founder. He came out of the lonely Cumberland and returned to it again with an idea. To build a school, to go out to the people, to teach them to think in common and to act together. A school to go out to the broken people of the Cumberland and end their fear and their loneliness and bring them back to the world. They are the stock of the first pioneers, tough, clear-headed, brave. Some are skilled men like Uncle Billy Thomas, 
who works like his great-grandfather with hand-forged tools. But mostly they're laborers. And they say of themselves, to cut bug wood at 70 cents a day, it takes a sharp axe, a strong back, and a weak mind. The school was trusted by the neighbors. It taught them the dances that their fathers had forgotten. The dances of a long time ago when the community was happy and prosperous. So the school took roots among the people. What are the advantages of labor unions? They give you shorter hours. And increase in wages. They protect your job. Clyde? Education. Vacations pay. What else, Mac? Brotherhood. Good. Ruby? Anything else? Increases prosperity. Work and study. Students from the mill of the mountain. They learn the principles of organization, history, science, economics. What are the problems of the world? How to unite the Cumberland people? Why there is poverty and why there is war. How to build a house for their neighbors on the mountain. How to organize, how to conduct a meeting, the rules of order and discipline. They learn by doing. Jane here thinks different. But I'm saying we better pull together all these unions or flop. That's straight. The school sent out teachers with visual charts. They taught the people by the eye and the word. At the roadside, or sometimes at a campfire, at night, in the lumber camp. They taught the people to think and to organize. Who's against us? The associations of manufacturers, the no strike injunctions, the men who won't look and won't listen, the thugs hired in Memphis, the unions faked by the company. Who's for us? The government, the Wagner Act. The Constitution backs us up. It's a new idea. You hear it in the Cumberland in Tennessee, in the big mills of the South. Ten million voices. Get wise. Organize. New York to San Francisco. Do you hear them? <laughs> Seattle and Pennsylvania. It's in the air, coast to coast. Get wise. Organize. There's a new spirit in the factories, in the lofts of Massachusetts and the mills of the Tennessee Valley. They're not alone anymore. They've got a union. There's a new spirit in America. Men and women are more than machines. They've got a union, coast to coast. The people of the Cumberland are not alone. of pioneers. The girl whose sweetheart was killed in the mines. Brave, a crackerjack speaker. The leaders of the Cumberland. The people of tomorrow. The school and the unions working together training the young people to organize, training a new generation 
determined that there be no more waste, no more disease. The families no more burned out and lost. The folk of the Cumberland no longer alone. are getting organized again. Want more money. We hear they're having a meeting someplace. The town will be fit to live in. Get the organizer. If we get him, we break the union. Are you willing to take an obligation which binds you upon your honor as a man? I am. To keep the same as long as life remains? and sincerely promise to bear true allegiance to the United Mine Workers of America and to help all brothers in adversity, to have all mine workers join our union, that we may all enjoy the fruits of our labor. It's a kind of a craze, this stuff. First the mines, then the girls down at the knitting mills, and then that folk school on the mountain. organizer to get out of Tennessee, and if he don't... Sooner or later, I knew it was coming. First the note, and then it was deadly quiet for about three days. I knew they were up in the hotel watching me. I went up Cary Street in a hurry. I knew it was coming. It was on Cary Street. I knew it would be this way. I gotta get to Jeff's place. They killed Frank last month, shot in the stomach four times. I gotta get out. No chance. They'll wonder where I am. It's here. I gotta get out. memory. But the miners were organized. Americans are too tough to frighten. The school went on with its work, went to the men at the lime plant, men with hands as hard as shovels, showed them how to make a union. A new saying came to the mountains, don't mourn, organize. July 4th, 1937, a new kind of Independence Day. The town of La Follette shut down for the labor rally. A new kind of Independence Day. No more terror, no more insecurity, no more gangsters, no more fear in the streets. are the people.
Folks, says the announcer, have a good time and don't eat too much. It's a wonderful day and go to it. A miner's local against the boys from the mill. The miners aren't doing so good. These lads are buddies on weekdays, but on holidays they slug each other. And in this corner, the oldest married couple, 49 years. The oldest American sport, hog calling. Miner's rep says, AFL or CIO, we've got to get together. That's what union means. A speaker from the Highlander Folk School promises the people of La Follette that the school will continue to answer their needs, will continue despite financial difficulties, that the school is answerable only to the people of Tennessee. Then he introduces a textile organizer who is a graduate of the school. But no more speeches, this is a holiday. takes over, a new generation. Daughters of miners, daughters of lumbermen. They've got strength and they've got nerve. The children of union men in a union town. They've got courage and hope and clear heads. And they're going to need them, for the bad lands remain. The rotting houses on the mountain. The people must be fed. No more routine of birth and death and scurvy. The land must give life. There is so much work to do, so many riches lost under the ground. There's work for a hundred thousand men to clear away the years of neglect, to put back the flooded soil, to bring out of the stony ground light. TVA, light for the dark valley. A good beginning, but only a beginning. This land can be rich, can bring forth wheat and fruit and hope for these American people. Union towns, good wages, decent food, a new kind of life, rich and abundant. The people stand together. Their union is their power. A new kind of America is beginning to rise. A land of the free. Power, light. A new morning for America, for the folk of the Cumberland.